Summer coming. Outside about to open back up. Outside is on the way. We in phase one. We back another week, another episode of BYOB. The, the podcast. I am your host, regular Ja, as you see on the screen. I think you can see it on the screen. I don't know. Obviously, if y'all can tell, we are doing some shit that we never have done before. Yeah. Zoom, we're actually social distancing this time. For the first time in history. <laughs> so we don't want no smoke with the governor and all that. So even though but outside just, opening back up, uh, we here. Yes, sir. I'm your host, regular Ja. I go by the name of Eddie Proof. He smoke, I drink, and we talk shit. That's what we, that's what we do. So, yeah, man. With or without the cameras. Yeah, it's worse without the cameras, right. but them niggas don't need it. <laughs> we go, uh, so boom, toast up. I had to, I'm getting used to the Zoom shit, man. This shit is different. I honestly hated video chat before quarantine. <laughs> now it's kind of like a necessary thing. <laughs> You know, they do this shit for my job and everything. Hey, at least sure. that's a plus, nigga. You over there, Rona coughing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mute the mic. From the, from the bubble cush. Yeah, y'all don't actually have to hear me cough anymore. <laughs> at least until we get back in the lab. Yeah, these first couple hits are always the worst. Especially yeah, then, because... So we've had quite a few things occur <laughs> over, over time. So the United States is a shit show. Man, is it ever? Damn, you can see all the sweat on my face and shit. I don't like this shit. Look, like I put Vaseline on. Hey, bro, that's your personal business, my nigga. Yeah, I ain't put Vaseline on my face. I ain't even going nowhere. I'm not ashy, me. My kneecaps is ashy. You look like a nigga that put Vaseline on his face to fight. Fuck out of here. I hate you. <laughs> even, <laughs> even virtually, I hate you. <laughs> But yeah, man, we had some uh, new music drop. The, we did? What drop? Well, well I mean, since our last episode, where we had Future drop. Uh, oh, yeah. Toxic King drops. Yeah. That shit was trash. Yeah, it wasn't. I ain't gonna say it was trash. It wasn't. Uh, I was underwhelmed. It was underwhelming. Of so, course. It wasn't uh, the best of the best for me. It wasn't what I expected it to be. Not a huge future fan. I think the future's had a couple good projects, but the last couple have been, yeah, to me personally. Yeah. So it's hit or miss. It's yeah. always going to skips, though. I mean, hopefully not. Maybe he might drop some. I mean, he always going to give you a good punchline or two there, here and there. Oh, yeah. Some great toxic shit to live by. But. <laughs> some good, some good motherfucking IG photo uh, captions and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's always going to give you that. He's always going to give you that. <laughs> You gonna get them IG photo captions? Always. I took a chance. <coughs> on you. That's the shit. Everybody was posting. Every nigga was posting that shit. I took yeah. a chance when you had miles on you, nigga. We <laughs> there. Uh, Better get the whole facts. <laughs> just like you don't just randomly buy a used car without the car facts. Don't just pick up a bitch with miles on it without checking the whole facts. That's Ladies, it. that go for y'all too. Check it, nigga. Whole facts. My whole faction say so you ain't never had no access to STDs. Oh yeah, I mean my shit is clean, but don't don't go digging my don't go digging my shit up. You can ask me, I'll tell you straight up. Yeah. But yeah, uh future dropped. Um who else dropped? Young and May dropped. Shit was I. Right. No, I didn't listen right. to that. I've been meaning to listen was, to that. It was all right. Like I I mean uh, it's funny, you know, she don't she you know. She can rap. It's, she can rap. That's exactly what you would expect. Yeah. Uh, what else dropped in the month of May? That had been something I was really impressed by this month. It's just not coming to my mind. Uh, um, I had sent some shit. I forgot what it was, man. Quarantine just been so... <laughs> everything just runs together during quarantine, B. So everywhere. 
<laughs> this shit been all um, over the fucking place, man. I don't ever think we talked about the Chris Brown and Young Thug album that dropped. Yeah, that was one of them. Um, that shit was all right. I couldn't tell who was Chris Brown or who was singing. Like, Chris Brown and Young Thug sounded alike on that. So, <laughs> but it was cool, though. Yeah, who else? Um, Rush Redrop, uh, Shake the Snow Globe. Like, with a deluxe edition. So, you know, that's what niggas do now. They drop a new single. They yeah, just add it on whatever the last album was to get them sales up. <laughs> Lil Baby did that shit earlier this month. Yeah, he dropped the deluxe edition of his shit, but his album's cold, so it didn't. Yeah, I'll was i, I I'll re listen to the new one. <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, Key Glock and Gunner, that's who I was missing, I think. I didn't listen to that. Yo, I've been missing bad music. I've just been sitting in the house. I gotta do something in my life. How the um, fuck wait, you sitting in the house but still not listening to music? Like, that's the. Fam, I've been taking naps. You hear me? <laughs> I, I have a scheduled nap time like I'm a six year old. <laughs> it was wild. I think I need vitamins or something because. Nigga said that like he was running the streets mad busy. Nigga, I've been Yo. taking naps. You ever taking naps? <laughs> These shits are important. <laughs> well, yeah, and then Styles and uh, Days Loaf drop EPs. They did. Styles has been dropping some fire recently. Yo. Styles is getting better, man. Like, age, and the yeah. nigga's been great. <laughs> the nigga's been great, and it's like the nigga just keeps elevating and getting better in this craft, and that shit is crazy. It's not too many niggas who do that shit. And like, oh. he's consistent though. It's not like why are oh, I you thought you was about that? to say something, nigga. Oh, I, I was like, somebody breaking in your house, man. Like, <laughs> you go handle that. The podcast can wait. <laughs> um, that was what. <laughs> I'm looking at you and I'm like, yo, is this nigga, is he going to say what he was about to say or what? (laughs) As I was scrolling through the hip hop releases, I just, I do remember that Gunna dropped the album last week. Yeah, I just said that. Uh, You did? I said Gunna and Key Glock. Oh, I thought you said they did some shit together. See, see, I'm tripping. We got to do, see, I got to get this virtual shit together. Might have been how I worded it. I know I word shit fucked up all the time. I'm not saying I'm going to stop doing it. I'm just saying I know I do it sometimes. And they said Gunner was on an episode of Crime Stoppers. I seen that. The man tell him. He said he ain't never tell or stop no crimes in his life. But I seen the um the actual video though. It's like the nigga was like, "Yeah, my cousin, he doing life for something that he did." Like oh, well, he I as in like the other no he as in like the other nigga. <laughs> oh. He was like, yeah, so you letting my friend go down for something that you did. For some shit you did. And it's like, yo. Um, yeah, it's kind of snitching, bro. <laughs> it's kind of snitching. Don't you have to sign a waiver to be on Crime Stoppers? Like, I think it's a lot that goes into that. You definitely have to have a release. Yeah, you can't just push <laughs> like, on Crime Stoppers yeah. for the fuck of Like, you got to have, like, a release form and shit. So it's like, yo. Yeah, yeah. Snitching is a new thing, as we know. So. Yeah, so I guess technically, and this is not me motherfucking like writing it. I'm just saying, but technically, I guess he didn't mm-hmm. snitch because ain't no double jeopardy. Like once a nigga get knocked for murder, you can't just be like, all right, yeah, it was me. They not gonna be like, yo, we'll let him out and we'll take him. <laughs> like, yes, they will. Yes, they will. That's not how double jeopardy works. <laughs> they would definitely take your ass. Oh, well, I know. I know double jeopardy is you can't like if you beat the murder, they can't bring it back on you. I know that's yeah. Really that technically is, but yeah. I just, but if they find me guilty of murder and you come forward and be like, "Yeah, I committed the murder," nigga, they gonna let me go and they will take your ass. <laughs> I'm gonna punch you in your shit in the hallway, like when we doing the exchange for even letting me do this time, nigga. I mean, you know, if I call nah, but I mean, I do with a body, I do a body and I'll do the time. That of, of, that's a fact. If you with a nigga and you know what I'm saying, yeah. like you, you were part of that because you yeah. were gonna get conspiracy either way. Either way, yeah. <laughs> So, so rather rather the nigga got caught with you when you got locked up or just you like so you were you was either gonna get the murder or you was gonna get accessory. Yeah. And cause now, if I was home sleeping and you just happened to use my gun for the body, yeah, fam, you need to come talk to these people. Yeah, I need I need you to go <laughs> ahead. You, come talk to come tell these people what happened. I don't want to tell them what happened, so I need you to come tell them what happened. Yeah. Cause it's like, yo, I'm I ain't gonna tell on you, but you're not gonna be. You're not gonna live comfortably if I gotta take this L. Facts <laughs> for you. I ain't gonna tell on you, but 
you're never going to be able to sleep comfortably because I'm going to have people just tapping on your window every night. Mm-hmm. Just annoying shit. You ain't got kids. It's going to annoy the fuck out of you. you so, slash the tires three times a week. Like, yeah. just random shit. I'm gonna I'm gonna have them slice your tire at the tire shop. <laughs> like as you about to pull off, they gonna just throw some fucking nails on the ground. That's just to deal with you till I get home. <laughs> Nigga, you're not coming home. <laughs> I'm always coming home. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, nigga. Yeah, I'm trying to come home. <laughs> got your body, but yeah. Um, so I think that's it. That's it for the releases. I know Freddie Gibbs is dropping tomorrow night. And I can't motherfucking wait. Because that nigga's Freddie dropping tomorrow. Uh, Consistent. Scotty dropping tomorrow. And, and there was somebody else that I thought I wanted to hear tomorrow that's dropping. Mm. Um, Joel Ortiz. That's going to be interesting. I ain't heard no Joel, Joel project in a little minute. Little, little Yachty dropping tomorrow. Real ass bitch, give a fuck about a nigga. That <laughs> nigga really went in the studio and recorded that shit and then gave that it shit, bitch. Like, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> nigga really did that shit. That's but yeah, it's gonna be, uh, it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna be interesting. The music world is interesting right now. Yeah, but you know these what? Versus series are still good. If they could ever get the fucking audio right. They they're never gonna get the audio. I hope. I don't understand why they can't get their nigga. We're we're regular niggas, and our audio sounds fine on this. (laughs) The music that we played, that shit was from my phone. (laughs) It was cool. That one twelve versus jagged edge shit pissed me off. I was really looking forward. Yo, how they had Teddy in the picture? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Jagged edge sound. They were screaming from underwater. Yeah, the funniest shit somebody said, Jagged Edge shit sound like they just walked straight out of Wi-Fi. <laughs> that shit was bad. Shit was terrible. But yeah, the verse is going to be good. Um, they saying it's, uh, the next one is supposed to be Kirk Franklin versus, um, what's his name, man? The fat nigga. I can't call the gospel person a fat nigga. <laughs> was it Fred Hammond, I think? I think it's oh. Fred Hammond. As soon as you finish saying that shit, I'm telling you, I'm not watching that shit. <laughs> Kurt Franklin, Kurt Franklin is gonna watch anybody he goes against in the in the gospel world anyway. I mean, the only gospel song I know is "Stomp," but I don't even know if that's a gospel song. <laughs> I know Mary, Mary, and them sing some shit. Like I might know the harmony behind it, but I'm not watching that shit. <laughs> we technically don't know if that shit a gospel song. That shit might be talking about stomping it. <laughs> yeah, like for real, knowing Kurt Franklin. Like if he don't, if he don't like Jesus, nigga, but you better praise God. I'm gonna shoot that song. <laughs> Oh, I'm just shooting that on God. <laughs> nah, that was my shit, yo. But you better praise God. <laughs> if you ain't a Christian, I'm going to stab you in the... Kurt Franklin has something to do with that fucking song. Yeah, ain't nobody right. tell me how to... right. He goes wrote that shit. That's my type of gospel music. <laughs> but yeah, so it's Kurt Franklin versus... I think it was Fred Hammond. Um, they trying to get, I think, MC Light versus Queen Latifah. Bone and Thugs versus Three Six is supposed to be going down, or UGK Bone Thugs versus, versus Three Six. They might switch it to UGK versus Three Six. Yeah, and then it's um Doja Cat versus the Black Community. Man, Doja, that's wild. I'm still it all makes sense now. That I'm that mood cool. song was all about her being really white and just having black spots. <laughs> That cow shit. Think, think, my bro. brother. It's wild though, man. She really like. I mean, I knew she was dating the white guy, which is kind of a red flag for me, anyway. Not that interracial yeah, yeah. dating is a problem for y'all. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I still clap them cheeks. She don't really like you. She gonna call you a nigger during sex. Is that what you? Is that really what you want? Fuck it, fuck. <laughs> well, though, if I were to have sex with a white, <laughs> never mind. We're not. Let's not even. Let's just, <laughs> that shit bad, man. They found shorty like part of some anti like racial groups and shit. That shit was wild. Yeah, like I seen like some actual like video footage of her being, like and it's of her being what my fault. Yeah, no, of her being in the in the shit. 
And it wasn't like, you know how they dig up research on people and that should be five, six years ago? No, nigga, this shit was like April. Like, yeah, it was like last <laughs> week. Two weeks ago. <laughs> like a week ago. Yeah, all right, see what you're doing. Like, you're she doing was just in that chilling like she not famous or nothing. Like, <laughs> it was just... Yeah. You do what all white people do, though. They they appropriate and exploit our culture for the money. Yeah, that's man. She knew black okay. people would take to her. She fucked herself, man. She drift dropped that banging remix too with Nicki. She just made a couple of dollars. Did she hit number one yet, or did um? I think, I think she was tired of the Savage. I believe so. I think they were like number two. I don't think they were number one that week. Yeah, so I mean, I know one was number one and number two, so I guess uh, Meg and them hit number one and those hit two. So, that shit wild, man. But apparently, so, according to Takashi, the billboards is bullshit. That's because they removed all that niggas, <laughs> all his shit off of it. No, nah, I mean that too, but they no, nah, they just they just removed his shit because of the statement that he made. So he basically called them out saying that there was a bunch of bullshit and that his new song that he dropped should have been number one because of the number of streams versus whatever the song was number one last week. Yeah. And, you know, Billboard came out and was like, well, what he was looking at is his global numbers. We only do it based on U.S. streams and such. So. Yeah, but at the same time, my nigga, like, you're trying to go against Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande. Like, my nigga. It's tough, Money B. It's not too many motherfuckers that's not you that can go against them two on a song together. That's that's gonna beat them out. Yeah. The song could be completely like, trash, but the fact that they did a song together is gonna jump on the chart. Yeah, like you just say those two names and it's like, oh yeah, we got to hear what this shit is. Yeah, you gotta like. hear it. You gotta hear it. This shit I, I hate too. To it. I, I didn't listen to it. I would though. I ain't gonna I on, yeah, I, I heard it on something. They both make some high music for what they do. Yeah. Bieber's image don't match his music. Not anymore. And I'm I'm, I'm cool with it though, because the music is fire. Yeah. Hey, look, man. I don't care what you do in your personal life, as long as the music is fire. That's I learned it. a long time ago to separate the artists from their personal life. Yeah. So what you're saying is you 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 those you get to pass from you. You good. Like you ain't worried about none of that shit. Uh, her music's not that good. You have to be great at what you do for me to buy R. Kelly is amazing. So I can separate R. Kelly from Robert. <laughs> fuck Robert do in his personal life. I like R. Kelly. <laughs> I don't I don't give a fuck about Robert. I think Robert's a piece of shit. You know what I mean? So the nigga's name is Robert. First and foremost. You never trust anybody with two first names. The nigga's name is Robert Kelly. Word to the wise. Never trust anybody with two first names. Nigga does make some fire music, though. Well, he don't make nothing now, but he has made <laughs> some fire he music. He needs to. The illest statement I ever saw was, I don't care if you put R. Kelly under the jail. Just put a recording studio under there with him. Hey, nigga, Gucci had a motherfucking... That. Gucci had a studio in his jail? Let's see what y'all want. This nigga we'll Gucci dropped it. five albums from prison. As we'll get into in this episode... This whole world is full of people who ain't shit. And we're the oh. motherfucker. Yeah. You know, if you got some good qualities, I'll take a fuck. That's it. Um, what else we got in music? People. Oh, music. Um Cam Cole Hart. I don't know, I don't know if you remember him. I do remember him. So he was on a video last week saying that um all this shit between him and the baby was staged to I guess help the baby stuff. image. I mean, that makes sense. That was a nigga that he beat up in the Gucci store, right? Mm hmm. We didn't store. actually see the fight. Remember, they started <laughs> arguing, and then the. It just popped up, and he was bloody on the ground and shit, right? Yeah, so I thought that was shit was suspect from the beginning. And then I the baby had his big ass security jumping. nigga with him. Yeah, yeah that's what then the baby had the big ass security nigga with him. That's what I assume. Like I didn't just think you beat that man ass like that by yourself, which is possible, but I didn't think that's yeah. what happened. So yeah, apparently, or oh, not apparently, he said that apparently, allegedly, that um, I guess the the fight was real, but it wasn't real. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I guess afterwards, both of their camps kind of agreed on the shit. Like, all right, yo, we gonna put this video out. 
And it's going to... He said he got paid and everything for it. Like, yo, we going to put this video out and... Why are you talking about it now, nigga? Shut the fuck up. Because it's a year that's later? Sn- like, that's snitching to me. Yeah. It, it, it's a form of snitching. Like, nigga, we have business deal. That's what the situation was. It was. You got what you were supposed to get. Shut the fuck up about it. Yeah, because what it is... Yeah, because what it is is the nigga probably getting hold in the city or it, or whatever the case, or his yeah, own yeah, image is fucked up now because he got beat up. And it's just like, yeah. yo, niggas probably don't want to fuck with him, like fuck with his music. So he might that's be losing money. Issue, fam. That's, that's how you know you're not a real nigga to begin with because real niggas take L's. <laughs> As gun play. Like, As gun play. <laughs> you gonna play the real thing. He'll tell you about his L. But you take your L like a man. <laughs> What gunplay say when he took the L? That nigga said, nigga, you do it. You do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I was take that. Both, that shit I was, was trapped nothing. both ways, man. Imagine something. Like, <laughs> yeah, but good. how about you do it, though? Okay. And the average I'll nigga's not it. just running up on gunplay. Right. At all. <laughs> and here's the issue. Just because I took an L to that man does not mean I'm going to take an L to you. So you got to yeah. prove it to me. He proved it to me. You still got to prove it to me, though. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, yo, all right, nigga. Mike Tyson got beat up, but niggas is not just going to try motherfucking well, You're not going to run up on Mike Tyson. Because <laughs> you know. Anderson Silva got washed, nigga, but the average nigga on the street is getting the shit beat out of them. Yeah. Right now. By... Every, everybody has somebody that's better than them at fighting. Yeah. And the nigga might not be able to beat nobody else on this planet but you. He can just beat he but you. For some reason, he got your number. And you might be able to fuck everybody else up but him. <laughs> this shit weird. So you can play your chances. Don't run up on nobody thinking. Ask shit Daniel sweet. Cormier. The I don't nigga mean nobody. Daniel Cormier ain't lost to nobody but Bones Jones. And that last yeah. little but he old now, but that last little fight that he just lost. But he was undefeated. <laughs> Except for Bones Jones. Speaking of that, um we getting sports back, man. They, they starting to talk about making comebacks and shit. We getting sports back. NBA in June. <clears throat> that shit gonna be fire. We're gonna talk about June and July. You know, UFC already started. Conor McGregor just accepted the fight against Anderson Silva today. Yeah. They be, they saying that they don't think that UFC is gonna approve it though, which is stupid. I mean, it would be dumb not to approve the fight if both fighters. It'd be a great money. Yeah, it'd be a great money making fight. I think. Honestly, it's a silver fight with his ass kicked. I don't know why I get that feeling, but he's because he ain't. You seen what Adesanya did to him? Yeah. It's like, yeah, he. I mean, he's at the back nine in his career, yo. He's like forty something. Not still fighting for four at forty. Damn, I'm only thirty four now, and I don't want to fight him. Unless I'm can, motherfucking can I fight? like yeah. George Foreman or somebody. Want to fight? No, I don't. Tyson and Holyfield talk about making comebacks. That's gonna be wild. Let me let me um this is why you can't look, do virtual I was <laughs> this is why you can't do virtual shit with Jock because you be looking at porn while you're trying to shoot a podcast. Man, I'm looking at the fucking <laughs> <laughs> trying to research for the show, nigga. I ain't <laughs> nigga said I'm looking at porn. But now nah, I was trying to see how fucking old Anderson Silver was. The nigga's 45. And yeah, that's what right. and that's what his old ass gonna get hit with if he run up on me trying to kick and punch. Yeah. <laughs> The whole four pound. <laughs> you better be Bruce Leroy, bitch. <laughs> These bullets is flying. That's how I feel at 34, yo. Like, especially, and again, we're going to get into it more and more with the show going on, but with the, with the bullshit going on in the world at this point, fam, you run up on me. You better be Bruce Leroy. Yeah, I'm not playing this shit. If you're not catching bullets with your teeth, leave me alone. Nah. Oh, he can catch him with his teeth. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what he catching with him. He go catch him. <laughs> no, but you better catch him with your teeth because these shits is flying. <laughs> back to back. <laughs> back. Yeah. Nah, I, and I'm gonna be all the way hundred percent honest. Mike Tyson is going to beat the dog shit out of Evander Holyfield. <laughs> this shit's this shit's not even gonna be a fair fight. I watch both of the training videos. And Mike Tyson, Tyson is a dog. Holyfield looked like a nigga that's his age that's just still boxes. 
Mike Tyson yeah. looks like he can fight he can jump in the ring with anybody at this point. And he got, like I said before, he got that old man strength. That's shit different. Yeah. And now that nigga got, he's like, he's like more wise and shit. Like, so now he knows if, if he wants to hurt you, he's knowledgeable that he wants to hurt you. Mm -hmm. now. It's not I mean, like. He, he was always that way. That nigga told niggas he's going to eat his children. Like, that's why I should say this in life, man. No, and him and Lennox Lewis grew up together. That's the crazy Yeah, thing. like, nigga, I know you. <laughs> I know you in real life. Like, nigga, we was in the, I forgot what shit they was in. They lived together, though, in it. Like, some boxing camp when they was, like, teenagers. Like, my nigga, like. <laughs> I just come to realize that I'm, it's not me sweating. I just got great skin. This light just reflect off of that shit. It's called melanin. All right, Umar Johnson. But, um. <laughs> <laughs> that shit fire. I want to get that nigga on the show so bad. I pay for that shit. I ain't gonna lie to you. That should be. Please let me interview this nigga. That shit was so good. <laughs> he oh, go, shit, yo. He's gonna I block us. Him. He's gonna block he's, us. Oh, man, he's gonna walk out in the middle of this shit. <laughs> oh yeah, nah. It has to be a show where he's physically in the room with us. It can't be. Yeah, no it can't shit. be this because he's gonna hang up. With him. He's gonna hang up. <laughs> you gotta tell the nigga like, look, you get half now and half when the shit over, but you gotta stick it out. <laughs> You think Charlemagne bad? Wait till I get. <laughs> if y'all think Charlemagne's an asshole, y'all would hate me in real life. You dirty nigga! I never fuck with you anyway. <laughs> that's when I actually. Good, that's when I started liking that nigga. Like, oh, this nigga is. Yeah, this nigga's okay. Yo, he's really a silly nigga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's really that's a silly nigga. Forget. That's what everybody forget. And he's from <laughs> North too, like. <laughs> I know I talk that shit to you, nigga. <laughs> what do you, you want to do? You dirty great nigga. Juice here. Man, it ain't, it's, it's not fucking with the bread plum. Yeah, it's like it's not gonna be. It's not. It's not fucking with the red plum. <coughs> in any shape, form, or fashion. Mm -hmm. Uh. What else we got for sports? Oh, well, we was on that. We was talking about Tyson. I don't know if you've seen it. It wasn't really on the docket, but um, your man Wilder is still talking shit. No, Tyson. I miss. I missed all that. He's still talking shit to Tyson. So he pretty much what he said was Tyson ain't beat nobody. Like everybody that Tyson really beat was past their prime for real. Yeah, and they started okay. going down the list, and it was like, but well, that made sense. The list that they put out, the people that Tyson really beat, was kind of past their prime. And the, the L's he took with the niggas that were in their prime. Uh, it, 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 I gotta, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to look at this shit, shit yeah. and revisit it. <clears throat> I just watched last Saturday with. Um, it was like uh, Tyson's. It was like they were just showing like, a bunch of his boxing matches. Them shits was short. <laughs> it yeah, was like, real short. <clears throat> They gave yeah. her the four hour window, but it was a lot of filler, like the, the actual matches. Hey, we was in Atlanta, because you know me and Country went to Atlanta. So we yeah. were sitting in the restaurant eating. Um, shout out to Wing Factory in Atlanta. If y'all are in Atlanta, I need y'all to stop at Wing Factory. This here. nigga with these lemon pepper tater tots. This nigga's been talking Fair. about them shits ever since he had them. And this shit was these like lemon almost pepper a week ago. tater tots changed my life. Due to the Wing Factory. But they also gave me some fire wings. They were. Honey lemon yaki wings. So it's honey, lemon pepper, and teriyaki sauce together. That mixture. That sounds interesting. That mixture that sounds fucking amazing, dog. So, that sounds real. Um, we, we were sitting there eating, and that shit was on. We watched like three Tyson fights sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> this shit was like this shit was like a fifteen minute collective. Yeah, it's not long at all. <laughs> I'm definitely not gonna get out. It was like by the time you ordered eight and <clears throat> left, nigga, you done seen three fights. And <laughs> that's not a long fucking time to sit down. But I'm excited, yeah, yeah. man. Like I seen um one of them, um the nigga said he wanted Tyson in the like it was like a bare knuckle league. And I'm like, yo, that's not smart. Like that's the dumbest shit that you <laughs> that's like the dumbest request ever. Like nigga, I want to fight you. I mean, that nigga that shit is fucking stupid. Anyway, I got a homeboy who do that shit, and or not I'm more of an associate, but yeah, you know, respect to the people who do it because that's some tough shit to do. But again, I'm not signing up to just fight you bare knuckles every <laughs> no, nigga. 
you don't pay me enough. There's no, no. Nah. Them yeah, niggas that do that shit. isn't even really a big sport. Niggas don't even know that shit really go around like that. No, that shit is, no, you probably get more money if you go down to Miami and fight one of them Haitian niggas that like Kimbo and them used to do the backyard boxing with. Niggas is on some nut shit. I'm not doing none of that shit. I ain't with nothing. <laughs> You'll probably get more money in Florida than you will in the actual fucking league. Yeah. But yeah, I Take said like, <laughs> nigga, if I'm doing any fighting, I'm I'm going boxing. At least I'm gonna get paid. Yeah. Cause I seen uh Michael Jai White. He was on Vlad, and um. He was talking about how um. If he didn't act, or whatever the case was, I'm paraphrasing. If he didn't act and he had to fight, they asked him why he would, if he would have joined the UFC, he was like, nah, them niggas don't make no money. Nah, they don't make they do. no money. They really do that shit for the love of it, though. Yeah, they just want to, them niggas just, they, like, they, love what they, they just want to fight, bro. They love what they do. And that I understand. Like to fight, you have to, you have to love what you do. Yeah. That's yo, I used to like when that USC shit really started getting popular. It'd be niggas from the hood that'd be like, man, fuck these punk ass white boys. I'm like, look, these niggas is different now. These ain't the white boys. <laughs> <laughs> these is not the white boys we went to high school with. These niggas will beat the shit out of one of y'all niggas. You better chill. All right, so funny story. In high school, I had he was my oceanography teacher. Mm -hmm. See, he was a cage fighter on the weekends. Everybody knew that shit. So as long as he didn't lose on the weekends, the whole week was cool. But if he was losing, he'd be an asshole. So he got in my face one day because I was late to class. I walked in with some Chick Fil A, like I always fucking do. I don't need this class. I'm just here to be here, so I don't get. You know what I'm saying? So I get in trouble. I need this fucking class. So hold on, yeah. I'm gonna let you finish your story. But you left school to go to Chick Fil A. Yeah, nigga, fuck school. <laughs> that's my nigga. I'm a real nigga. Fuck that's you, my motherfucking nigga. <laughs> Cause that's the type of shit I used to go to Salzer every day, but nah, go ahead. Bitch, I'll be back when I get back. <laughs> I'm here, like, leave me alone. Um, so he was pissed off one day. He decided to like get in my face and shit. I'm like, Mr. Ferris, like, I'll fuck you up. Knowing in real life that I'm not gonna fuck him up. What I did was, I'm not gonna fight you here. I invited him to my house after school. Like, if you wanna see me, come see me in my house. Everybody was talking to me like, what the fuck are you want to do? He popped up at your house. Nigga, I'm going to stab him. Do you hear me? Nah, I'm not fighting him. It's a grown-ass man. You know you a grown kid. Ass man. You're a fucking grown-ass man. Cage fight. And I, I mean, at, at 17, 18, I was still a big nigga. Like, I had been through some shit, so it was yeah. cool, but I know I'm not about to be a cage fighter. I know he knows some shit I don't know. I'm going to stab the shit out of him. He spoke to my house. <laughs> Luckily, Mr. Ferris never showed up to the crib, though. <laughs> he was, was going to mop you. He was like, yeah. I was going to slice the shit out of him, though. You hear me? He was going to mop you all the way the fuck up. Yeah. I take my L's like a man, nigga. <laughs> hey, fuck it. If, as long as you take them, <laughs> that's all that matters. Yeah, I take my L's like a man. But yeah. And my L's don't go on social media like y'all. Stop putting your L's also on social media, man. Y'all niggas like weirdos. No, I seen a chick that somebody had shared on my timeline. That caught me. Um, <laughs> just smashed you in the face. I see. I it. definitely didn't mute my my mic when I just said that, but mm. <laughs> fuck it, it is what it is. But um, what was I? Oh, I was on my on my uh, my timeline, and the chick had got beat up, I guess, by a nigga girl, and like her shit was like like swole, like really fucked up, lip bleeding, busted, and shit. The, the bitch catching it was like, I'm still gonna fuck him. Yeah, he gonna fuck him with the fucked up face and everything. I was like, damn. So she, yeah, nigga just throwing their L's on social media like it's a badge of honor now. It's two things that I hate. Two, two, two fucking things that I hate. If you going through shit and you crying your eyes out, because life happens, that shit happens. Mm -hmm. Don't take out your phone and record yourself and post that shit on social media. That shit is fucking stupid. Yeah. And number one, and you see I'm flicking y'all off. Stop taking pictures of yourself in the fucking hospital with your hospital bands talking about pray for me. And you in there for an x-ray. Like, y'all relax. Y'all do a lot. For a fucking routine, a yeah. follow-up. You in there for a follow-up. Nothing wrong with you. You're burning. Like, I'm not praying for you for that shit. The fuck? Pray for me. They had to put a Q-tip in my shit. Yeah. 
And they say, Please boy, pray. fuck you. <laughs> boy, fuck you. You should have prayed for you before you yeah. got him. <laughs> before you wild out. But yeah, oh, speaking of speaking of hospitals and sick, uh, get get well soon, Patrick Ewing. Definitely, he definitely caught yeah. the corona. Yeah. And that shit real, but I'm not letting that shit stop my life, man. Nah, I mean, I ain't letting it stop my life, but I'm definitely more cautious about how I move, though. Especially since people who I, yeah. I like, I actually know. Yeah, I know people. Yeah, I know people who lost people in. So I, yeah, I, I, I know it's real. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I know people that like like got it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know. Here's my ill segue. You know, I'm not worried about being about Corona. I'm not worried about the coronavirus because I'm a black man that lives in America. Yeah. And at any given day, I can walk outside my house and die. Yeah, let's get into it. We we can say the rest of the sports for the for the sports episode. So which one do you would I rather have a coronavirus or or live free? Or live afraid. I can't live afraid, man. I'm black. I gotta deal with that shit every fucking day of my life. And I got a son. Who I gotta make sure is fine for the rest of his life. Yeah. You gotta this prepare that young man to grow up in this in this motherfucking society. This shit is wild. And you know, the fucked up thing is. So white people, we're gonna say white people a lot in these next 20 minutes or so. Or if, you get offended, if you're offended by the fact that we say white people, you're probably the white people that we're talking about. Yeah. Because obviously, like you know, we don't mean all white people, but I hate having to keep stopping to say I don't mean and all I'm not, white people. Yeah, I'm not going to. Just, just like when I say fuck the police, I'm not talking about all the police. We just talking about the bullshit cops. The bullshit cops. But no, so white people, they have a Fuck the police. With a sick dick. Sorry. Just wanted to throw that in there. And my whole thing is, I'm going to get back to what I was saying, but my whole thing is, it's like, obviously we know all cops not bad. Okay, yeah. cool. But the good cops ain't doing shit or saying shit about... So if it's more good cops than bad cops, right? They should outweigh them in enough numbers to the point where they can't get blackballed. Because strength is in numbers. Facts. So if it's more of us than the bad ones, and I'm not saying us like I'm a fucking cop. Niggas know I'm not the police, but if it's more good ones than bad ones, how can they blackball you? It's more of y'all. If all of y'all motherfuckers stand up and say, yo, nah, that's some bullshit. But what it is, it'd be one standing up or maybe two and them motherfuckers get blackballed and the rest of them just like, I ain't saying shit. I'm going to just let this shit happen. The fucked up thing is they talk shit about us like in the streets and how we move and our code of ethics and all that shit. And the fucked up thing is the police have the same code of ethics that we have in the streets. Very much so. Very gang. No snitching. Keep everything in house. You stick with your, you stick with your own. All that shit. The police stick stand by Stand heavy on all that shit. But it's just, it's the narrative that gets pushed. So when we as black people do it, if we got a gang or whatever, and the gang might not even be a violent gang. It might just, we just might be banning in the community for whatever reason. Like, we're wrong. But the motherfucking, is the narrative. Every narrative that, that black people attach themselves to is wrong in white America. This shit is. And I haven't, I haven't even spoke about it on social media. Yeah, I haven't been on Facebook in like two days. Like, I mean, I've been like scrolling like on people's shit, but I. I know everybody's opinion different on it, but you know, I'm sick of this shit. Yeah, like I seen it. But I'm not, I'm not going, this would be the only time that I talk about it because this is what we do. I'm not about to be talking about this shit, man. Shit happens way too often. Oh, yeah. Same you know, here. And this nobody want to do shit about it. There's no reason that all those people were standing around recording and nobody did anything. 
and everybody i've seen people be like oh what do you want them to do you know if they run up they'll die too or it doesn't you got to do something you they can't shoot everybody die. you can't shoot you everybody know, you got to do something i'm not telling you to attack the officer but you can approach that man and get him off of him you can throw, do something. throw a brick through his window if it was your child out there if it's your brother your husband your uncle your grand you're gonna do something yeah you could pick up a fucking rock or a brick and throw that shit through the squad car window bust the window i mean throw the brick at him you might get in trouble yeah Yeah, you you still might get in trouble but you ain't gonna fucking you ain't gonna get no murder charge you're not gonna get no you're gonna get a bullshit fucking little misdemeanor charge about vandalism or some stupid shit like that you bust the fucking window you're gonna get a vandalism charge and a fine but guess what you just saved this man's life and you got people you know there's always the black people like, oh, we do this to ourselves. You know, we still have problems with ourselves. Of course we do. But in the same token, if I'm standing on the street with two random black men, I'm not going to let a nigga kill a nigga over no dumb shit. I'm not. Fuck all that. One second. And I don't mean to cut you off. But I, well, no, I guess, I, just, do, I, guess just, I do mean to. But you, you mean to. You mean to. Not in, in disrespect. So, no. I hate that shit. So, motherfuckers always talking about black on black crime and we kill each other and shit. If you can name me one fucking community of people that don't, I give you everything in my bank account. I don't think Asians do, but I don't know that for a fact. You don't think an Asian ever killed an Asian? I mean, I don't think it happens often. You don't, think them, you don't think them I'm fucking just, triads just, and... <laughs> I know. I'm... I'm I, I get sarcasm, bro. You know, yeah, I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm never the, really the people, actually afraid. The people don't. The people don't get sarcasm. That's what I'm saying. So, the motherfuckers like, oh, yeah, but we kill each other. But y'all only outrage when somebody else from another race killed. No, motherfucker. That's not what it is. But y'all motherfuckers only bring up black on black crime when we get outraged about police killing us. So, who's really like... It's not I never that, hear motherfuckers talk about black on black crime until after we say something about the police need to stop killing us. It's, it's not that we're mad at another race for killing us because black people kill white people every day. You know what I'm saying? White people kill black people every day. That, that shit happens. Yeah. We get mad when it's racially motivated and when it comes from the people who are hired to serve and protect the community. That's, That's when we get mad. People are going to do stupid shit and you can never stop people from doing stupid shit within their communities. It's just never going to happen. That's a fact. But that's not racially motivated. It's also not always the people who are supposed to be protecting the community that are doing this. That's the difference. These yeah. niggas in the hood ain't hired to protect the community. It'd be nice if they did and there are some that do. Yeah. But that's not what they're hired for. That they didn't sign up for that shit. Yeah. And when you do I, get niggas like that in the hood, there are a lot of niggas who don't let certain shit go down in their hood because uh, niggas my hood. Bro, I have personally been in situations where I've seen niggas stop murders. Nigga, not in my hood. Like as they have, yo, chill. Nah, this shit ain't. That shit ain't gonna happen today. I'm talking about the other nigga got the gun on him, about to pull it out, and it's a nigga there, like, bro, what the fuck is you doing? Like, you bugging? Like, chill the fuck out. Like, we not that, that shit yeah. is not about to happen right now. Like, I've I've actually seen with my own eyes, niggas in the hood, niggas stop shit. Cause they escalate they, into a, yeah, yeah, cause they know sometimes it's some dumb shit. But again, those people didn't sign up. They didn't volunteer because that's what you do when you apply for a job. You're volunteering. Yeah, they didn't volunteer to protect the, the people of the city. That's why I say, and I see all this blue lives matter shit, and it's like, Fuck them. ain't no such thing as a blue life, my nigga. That's a job. Niggas ain't just out here killing cops, <laughs> my nigga. <laughs> no, the average nigga is not about to pull up and kill a cop. Most crazy niggas ain't about to just pull up and kill cops. So fuck that blue lives matter shit. No. Uh, and I'm glad they ride it in Minnesota. And we still haven't said his name, but rest in peace to George Floyd. Rest in peace to George Floyd. That's just some bullshit, man. One thing about it, Minnesota ain't they they bought that shit. They burned the police station down and I respect that shit. 
So I'm looking up how many they officers. Them niggas definitely looted the target though, and I was with that shit too. I wish I was. Never mind. <laughs> well, they said that they said that the target that they looted, they wouldn't sell water and shit and milk to protesters who had got gas and shit. That's what I'd seen on the internet. I haven't been able to officially verify that with any place. But... Yeah. So if that was the case. Definitely fucked that target. And the old white bitch that was out there stabbing people in the wheelchair. <laughs> Yeah, so look, I looked, I'm looking it up. So last just last year, 89 police officers were killed in the line of duty. Not all were murdered. Some of them were fucking hit and runs on the side of the highway. 89. I'm looking at the stats. So in America, there's more than 800,000 officers. So Nigga, are you having a fucking stroke or some shit? Can't hear you at all. Can nah, your fucking mic is muted. Heard that shit on mute. <laughs> that shit be in my chest. I couldn't get it out. <laughs> that shit was wild. I didn't try to stress that shit out. <laughs> and I'm trying to be serious and read the stats like a like I'm on some real serious shit. And I'm looking at this nigga like yo. You meant to cut that part out of the video. Start, Hell no. Start, 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 start over again. Nigga, if I didn't cut me falling out of a fucking chair three weeks you ago. You did cut that out of the chair. Nobody seen that shit. We talked about it. So 89 officers. Start, start over from the beginning. You cut that shit out. <laughs> that shit in my chest. That shit was bad. Nah, so like, just last year, 89 officers were killed in the line of duty. Not all of them was murders. Some of them was motherfucking side of the road, people not paying attention. You know what I'm saying? They just got killed. Yeah. So there's 800,000, there's over 800,000 sworn law enforcement officers. So you're looking at 1%. <laughs> might be, listen, that might be less than 1%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, probably less than 1%. I think 1% would be what, 8,000? 8, yeah. Out of eight hundred thousand, mm-hmm. I believe I'm drunk. So if my math is wrong, yeah, my math math is bad. Don't yeah. fucking. No, it, is, it is less. It is less than one percent, though. Yeah. So because I lost my page, so now I gotta relook it up real quick. <laughs> but it don't take no time. We got to figure out how many black people were killed by police officers last That's year. literally what I'm looking up. In 2019. 228. 228. Oh, shit. No, this, that's this year. That's this year? Indians have been killed, 31 of whom are black, as of March 30th, 2020. So I'm looking for last year. That was just that was just this year. From fucking January to March. That's retarded. So last year. Mm-hmm. This is all black. But this is how many people the police have killed in the line of duty. Just in 2019. So that's I don't know if my camera's blurry <laughs> or whatever. So that's no, 1,000 people. That's 1,004 people. It's 10 times the amount of people. It's 10 1,004 times. fucking people. And of course, this link won't tell me how many um is motherfucking black. Oh, nope. We can get it by race right here. Certain yep, by race. 235. I'm looking at it. Yeah. 235. It's three times the amount of people. A little less than three times, like two and a half times. So 81 cops overall of all races were killed or died in the line of duty last year. And 1,004 civilians have been killed by police. 235 of them are black. And if we search the number of them that were unarmed, I'm sure it'll be still pretty But low. here's the kicker, though. 
because they have white, black, Hispanic, other, and unknown. I can guarantee <laughs> in that fucking unknown. <laughs> There's more black people. Which is 202. That's definitely black people. I'm mad that people have a tough time denying this shit. You could easily pull up the facts. Yeah. Like Talk to black in America, man. <clears throat> it's hard to be black in America. And the worst part about that shit is I gotta raise my son in this shit, man. Like, I feel like I made it. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like I know how to conduct myself and carry myself to I where I can survive, but yeah. I gotta bring a whole I gotta bring a whole man up in this shit to teach him the same shit that I know. And it's fucked up because it's like we have to teach our kids uh, how to move a certain way when it yeah. comes to certain situations. White people don't have to do that. White people don't have to tell their fucking kids, hey, when a cop pulls you over, comply. Hey, if a cop sees you doing this, talk to him nicely. <clears throat> Just listen to everything he says. Hey, when you walk into a neighborhood, please don't have your hoodie on or don't have your hood on your head. Like, they don't have to have all these pep talks with their children like black people do. The only thing these people understand are money and violence. Yeah. And it's crazy though. So even like with the uh the the protests in Minneapolis right now, I see so many white people on my news feed that's understanding. I see some that don't really understand, you know, all the, the looting or whatever. Nah. And then I see some that's just against it. But the crazy yeah. thing is I seen more people talking about how disgusting looting is than yeah, I see happened. talking about why the looting is occurring. Yep. That's the yeah, shit that, that 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 bothers me. <sighs> and all these, all these fucking, I ain't gonna say all. Most of these white people that I see in the comments or that I've engaged in intellectual conversation with, because all of them wasn't ignorant, but most of them I engaged in some somewhat of an intellectual conversation with. They all they all pretty much said the same thing though. Oh, that's not the way. That's not the solution. But when I asked them, yo, what, the, what is the solution? Nobody ever has an answer. Oh, looting ain't right. That's not the solution. We should pick another way. What's the other way? If you give us a, a, a fucking idea or a, another alternative, because the shit that we've been doing for the last 80 years ain't working. It has not been working. Talking ain't gonna get you nowhere. Walking down the street ain't doing shit but making your feet hurt. Yeah. Marching and praying ain't been doing nothing for black people in America. Martin Luther King and the marched and prayed, what happened? They got hit with rocks. They got beat with police batons. They got dogs sick on water them. Hose they got water hose. hose. Fam, it's not going to be me. They got beat and up, punched on. Yeah, go ahead. By no means am I the protector of all black people. And does it piss me off? Yeah. Am I going to go out and start a riot because some black guy in Minnesota got shot that I don't know. No, I'm not going to start a riot here and reaching away from that shit. What I will tell you, though, is that if it is me or one of mine, I'm going to give them hell. You hear me? Yeah. That's all I can tell you. I can't tell you I can protect everybody else because I can't. I can be mad. But this has been going on for years, so it's not like it's, this madness is new. Yeah. Protect your people. That's all I can tell you is protect your people. I'm not tell you to stand up for every black person in the world because I'm not going to. I, I can't. Now, if I see that shit happening right in front of me, totally different ball game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But different. And then most times, and I'm, I'm going to be all the way 100 because everybody say what they could, should, and would do. And I ain't talking about, you know, you or whatever. But just because yeah. see, I'm seeing it all on every fucking social media timeline. Yeah. A motherfucker don't, you might have intentions to do certain shit, but a motherfucker don't know what he's going to do until he's until actually he in that position. Mm -hmm. Like motherfuckers say, yo, if a motherfucker get on this plane on some bullshit, I'm going to do this and do that. I'm sure 
and don't take this as no disrespect. I don't know who got family that died in it, but I'm sure some of the people that was probably on the plane on 9-11 felt that they would do the same. Mm -hmm. Somebody get on here with some bullshit. I'm going to do this and that and the third. I mean, they did on the plane that went down in Pennsylvania. So somebody carried it out. Well, yeah. That's what I'm saying. But it's just like you... You might have intentions to, and you might not be, you might not be no pussy inside your heart. You might really feel that, yo, I would, I would motherfucking fuck a, such and such up if they pull some bullshit. But then when that situation actually occur and it's really there in front of you and you really have to live that shit, things mm. change for some people. They do. That's very much true. That's, everybody say what they would do and say they didn't want to happen to. Yeah. That's like, yo. I, I totally get that. Like my grandma, but grandma used to say, yo, everybody wish a nigga would till a nigga do. Till a nigga do. <laughs> and then it's like, yo, what? But, you know. What's I don't know, man. It's, shit, man. It's, <coughs> we as black people have been crazy. conditioned to forgive too easily. I'm forgiving these motherfuckers, yo. That's the thing. And it ain't not even just forgiving. Like, we begging for acceptance too much. That's a whole different conversation. And, and I think that's what it is. A lot of black people, like, we want to be accepted by other races so bad. And, but no other race gives a fuck if we accept them or not. They're going to be unapologetically them. And it's like, we end up just fucking with them because we just fuck with them. But we can't, black people can't unapologetically be us because we get stereotyped. And the crazy thing about that shit is every stereotype that they put on black people, every other culture loves to do the shit. Mm -hmm. Every, the good and the bad stereotypes, every other fucking culture break their neck to do that shit. It's wild. It's a wild world we live in, man. And as African Americans, we can't even go back to Africa, nigga. This shit is terrible everywhere. Yo, I'm you glad you want us back in the motherland. I'm glad you said that. Because I'm tired of arguing with motherfuckers who keep saying they want to go back to Africa. Miss Africa, they want you? It ain't even that. You are, so, all right. you are Americanized, nigga. They don't want no parts of that shit. Fuck you. Well, that's Boy, part of you. it. <laughs> so, a, a, a brief thing on that. So, all right. Everybody always saying, yo, let's go back to Africa. Nigga, Africa's a continent. That shit is not L.A. <laughs> where like, are you going that's, to? Where, that's the first thing. Nigga, you got to find out which country you're going to go to. You got to know how their culture is there because you're not going to just go there and just be who the uh, Yeah. <laughs> in, in Norfolk. Like, that ain't it, fam. <laughs> that's not, they not, that shit is not flying. So, number one, you got to find a country that's probably going to be within your comfort zone. Then you got to make sure their culture aligns with yours to the point, or at least they need to accept whatever culture you bring in. Man. But everybody like, yeah, let's go to Africa. Yeah, all right, nigga, you go to one of them fucking rebel countries. Mm. Fuck around and move to one of these beautiful ass countries you've seen on fucking Instagram. Mm. And you get Damn, there. Two weeks. <laughs> they will kill you. Just like these cops, like, they will kill you, nigga. Fat, it's like, yo, you get there, and it's like, yo, I looked at this shit on Instagram, it's beautiful. You, nigga, you get there, and that's where the rebels, <laughs> that's where they, 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 they set. <laughs> this is where we take our hoes, nigga. Who the, uh -oh. fuck is this? Who the fuck is this? When you fuck around, hit on the wrong woman out there, they gonna cut your head off. Nigga. On, on camera. On camera. You know, right, well, on <laughs> But that's the thing. So yeah, everybody talking about going to Africa. Don't know where they're gonna go in Africa. Nigga, what you gonna do for work? Like it a lot goes into that. Unless you financially secure, then hey, go buy some land in Africa and fucking invite me when you get there. Hope you got a fucking pool because Africa is hot. But um, but yeah, everybody talking about going back to Africa. And then to be honest, most black people in America ain't ready for that culture shock that they gonna get when they go to Africa. I got family in Sudan, bro. Like, they live different. Yeah. They, they very selfless. They don't, they not on some shit, like the shit we on here, even the people who Niggas, are giving. 
are selfish. We still selfish in our own ways. Nigga, they talk about going back to Africa shit. Niggas ain't even got passports. Fuck out of here. <laughs> niggas, niggas can't leave the state that they've been fucking saying that they tired of living you, in. Yeah, you ain't been to the West Coast yet. You expect me to believe that you don't? Yeah, shut up. But everybody woke. <laughs> the third eye. Think, brother. Think. As long as you point to your head when you say shit like this and make you sound. Oh, yeah. And if you really mean it, you do it with two fingers. Yeah. Like drop a, couple big, drop a couple big words in there and everybody think you. And the big words ain't even got to make sense in the fucking conversation. The incubation of the manifestation does not lead to molestation unless you have some gravitation. <laughs> Now stay like, woke. Nigga, what the fuck does that mean? Stay woke, baby screaming, or whatever the stay fuck child is getting being no said. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, like I don't know, man. Like, I really want to get deep in this conversation, but I, I'm finding myself rambling because like the shit that I really want to say, and I'm not saying it like I don't speak my mind, but the shit I really want to say. I don't have enough time to say it. I see. About I was, being like black said, this is my only time speaking on it. This is the only time I'm going to speak on it. I just protect you and yours, yo. That's it. Well, I mean, I'm definitely going to speak and on being see, black in America some, more, but. And if you see some fuck shit, stop the fuck shit. Yeah. I'd rather die on my feet than live on my knees. That's a fact. That's it. I mean, I ain't going out there looking for no conflict, but, you know, I'm not going to yeah. let no conflict. I'm not going to succumb to no conflict, neither. Neither. No, no, no. And some unjust shit like that, just like, you know, that shit's unjust. I'm not, I'm not going to sit back and watch no unjust shit like that go on. Not by the people who are supposed to be protecting us. Yeah, nah. And that's the thing, so. I'm not, because I got a son, so I'm not saying if I was out there. I would just ran and tackled that cop because at the end of the day, I still got a son I got to get home to take care of. Yeah, and you know they're going to shoot you but once. If you, if you attack that man, they're going to shoot you. Yeah. And so, but you can attack from a distance. You can throw a bottle or something. That's what I'm saying. You throw something in the hall ass. Throw something in the hall ass, break ass. Like, you walk up with your hands up so that you're not a threat and have a conversation with that man because they're not just going to shoot you for walking up with your hands up. If they do, and that's been recorded, then, I mean, yeah, nigga, that's double murder. Like, yeah, that's just murder <laughs> at that point. Fuck who you got on the ground, nigga. You just murdering, yeah. and I have my hands up like this, walking up. <laughs> so, but, uh, I seen a, uh, you know, see a girl at a gas station jump in front of her man, between her and her man, and the police, because she felt that. like they were so. You protect your people, man. Yeah, if he was out there so alone, that's sad, but. That's all I can say. Yeah, and all I say, hey, and I still ever kill me, don't fucking apologize. Raise hell. Yeah, no, uh, and like some shit I seen earlier, and I I really firmly believe it. If you have white friends that don't stand up for racism, you don't have white friends. You don't have white friends. <laughs> They're not your friend at all. And that's how you carry that shit from now on. And we yeah. hate to carry that shit like that. If you can't speak up against about it like we do, then yeah. If you got white you friends that have you. racist friends that are white too, and they tolerate that shit and they cool with them just because they grew up together or whatever the case, like bro, it's motherfuckers that I I've known since the sandbox, since diapers, and if they was on some real like fuck shit, that shit is done. I'm cutting them off. Hmm. Cause I can't be associated with that. I'm talking about some real fuck shit. Like if I know a nigga that I don't care if we motherfucking grew up in the house together, if you a sibling or a fucking family member, I find out you like a child molester or some shit. Like my I'm nigga, not I'm not you. rocking with you no more just cause we. You going to that extent? Even just on some yeah. more common shit. I don't rock with niggas who don't take care of their kids. Yeah, just all that shit. I mean, it's, it, I mean, it's different levels cause. Yeah, it's all fucked up, but it's definitely different levels. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. But it's just like, yo, when you won't fuck shit, you won't fuck time. I can't fuck with you. I'm good. I watch you from the distance. That's it. 
Listen, we can talk about this shit all day long. I don't. It's not. It's not for me to talk about. It's just it's not. Yeah, I just. My only request, white I'm people. I'm just glad it. I'm just glad that they sprayed that white bitch with the fire extinguisher at Target. That was. Oh, that was fucking hilarious. They should have super. Especially since she was number one, she wasn't crippled, so she was faking yeah. like she was in the wheelchair. Nigga, they she got was, a video of her getting up out the wheelchair. Yeah, she was stabbing people. She let the white lady go by her. She ain't stabbing the white lady. Yeah, she was only stabbing black people. Hey, and the white lady ran by me? with like mad shit in her hand too. Like, like, lamps and shit in her hand. Lamps and rugs and. <laughs> Like, yeah, you go ahead. I'm gonna get that motherfucker right behind you. <laughs> but there's even white people out there in, in, in Minnesota that's going crazy. Yeah, that's Probably what I'm saying. Yo, people. it's some it's some trill white people that yeah. even some ones that I know that I they kind of surprised me. Like, oh, okay, you really like I ain't gonna say you down because we so quick to invite motherfuckers to the cookout and all that dumb shit, but but I've seen some that's that. like they not like trying to be the, the trying to be black whatever the fuck that means i hate that phrase but i i can't not say it because people know exactly what i'm talking about when i say it but it, they not them type of white people they like motherfucking lily white andy griffith white people and they like yo nah this shit is foul that shit is racist and it's like yo i can fuck with you because yeah. you you just live how you live but you you can call fucked up shit when you see fucked up shit that's not your that's mentality it. And then you have the white people that are making excuses. Oh, if he would have complied, how much more complying can a nigga do? I didn't personally watch the video. I refuse to, and I won't. Because I said last year that I'm not watching no more black men get shot or killed or whatever the case on camera, and I'm not watching no more fucking slave movies. So I, I haven't watched that Harriet shit neither. So it's like, I'm not watching no more fucking slave movies, and I'm not watching no more fucking of my people man, getting killed on camera. I'm off that shit. But thanks to social media, I literally know exactly what happened. Yeah. They was on the nigga neck for eight minutes. You know what I'm saying? Knee to the neck. It was just like... He was handcuffed. Dude. That's the whole point I was getting at with the compliance shit. So they saying, oh, he ain't comply. Like, what more compliance do you want than he's begging for his life? <laughs> the man is... I, yo, please, I can't... I'm, I'm handcuffed, hands behind my back. I'm laying on my stomach on a hot ass ground, no shirt on. Like, my nigga, I can't breathe. Even if you get the fuck up off of me, I can't go nowhere. I'm on my stomach and my hands are behind my back. Where the fuck am I going? How the fuck am If I try to get up and run or whatever, then you tackle me. You don't got to put your fucking knee in my neck, but you tackle me and figure something out from there. But, but a knee fucking... in the neck is not even no shit that they train you to do. No. And what we did bring up, which again, I don't want to keep talking about this bastard, but that cop had a history of, of shit on him. Yeah. yeah I seen that. Shit. I seen that. And it was a lot against black people. And he, he fucking sports a MAGA hat. And he shook Trump's hand. And all that shit. That shit is wild, man. All that shit matters. And yes, I know, I know every Trump supporter ain't a fucking white supremacist, but what another thing I do know is every white supremacist is a Trump supporter. This is a fact. <laughs> so this is a fact. That's it. Every white supremacist, I mean every Trump supporter might not be a fucking racist, but every racist is definitely a Trump supporter. But you know, it's so he's part of a police shooting in 2006. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently a guy had a shotgun and was pointing, pointing the shotgun at the cops, which I can't be mad at that. At the end of the day, they are cops and they got to defend themselves. So you jump out of the truck waving a shotgun. Yeah. Shoot. Matter of fact, add that, um, jump in the joint and screen share that shit. Uh, so they yeah, can see it. Yeah. Jump in the joint and screen share that shit so they can see it. Technology, man. This shit works crazy. I love technology. I got smart light bulbs in my house. So this shit's a fire. <laughs> I was going to say, nigga, your lighting is fire. Nigga look like he in heaven. Smart light bulbs. Don't be a hater, B. This nigga's in heaven right now. I tell Google to change the color of my lights. That's what she do. I noticed your shit was red earlier. It's like, I got them on sale. You know, y'all know I'm cheap. 
don't judge me if porn is the first thing that pops up on my phone. Oh, this shit too. Um, boom. I don't gotta accept you and shit no more. Boom. Y'all see my cute kid? It's my cute kid. So I'm scrolling through the website, and these are the charges. In 2006, like I said, he responded to a stabbing in the house. Chased the guy that got out the car with a shotgun. Multiple cops fired at him and killed him. Understand him. If that's that, if that's actually what happened. Um, that same year, he was in a federal lawsuit filed by the correctional facility for something, which was just dismissed in 2007. Uh, He also shot a guy in 2008. They said the guy refused to get on the ground. The struggle began and he grabbed for the officer's weapon. The officer fired twice and he grabbed for the officer's weapon. He survived though. Probably definitely grabbed for the officer's weapon though. Uh, 2011, a guy pulled his gun in the playground. Apparently nobody done fired their weapons. I forgot what the actual list was. This is a long ass list. There's been a mad involved in mad shootings. Yeah, I mean, but <laughs> I was looking for the story list. Go, that they go had back up, Facebook. go back up, I go back up. No, 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 no. Go back. Go back up a little bit. Uh a little more. Or did we pass it? Now nah, go down. Oh no, hold on. Right there, right there, right there. Kelly Chauvin's attorney had politicians as clients and also defended Geronimo Yanez, a police officer in the mini. You see what I'm getting at? Mm hmm. Philando Castile? Mm hmm. So the same fucking lawyer, the same attorney. Another case that prompted the Black Lives Matter protest. Like, yo, that, that, that makes a lot of fucking sense. A lot going on, man, in the world. Life happens, though. Yeah. Um, so I, safe, just, man. I just need white America to stop telling us what is and isn't acceptable, especially if they don't have no fucking answers or solutions as an alternative. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me I'm wrong if you can't tell me what to do or this right. Yeah, if you don't know what's right, don't tell me I'm fucking wrong because how you know I'm wrong? Everybody's saying, oh, this isn't the answer. Looting isn't the answer. What's the answer? (laughs) Nobody ever has that fucking answer for me. Nobody can ever tell me what the answer is. And again, they burn down police station so i definitely agree with all that shit yeah listen man it's only not the answer because it's black people doing it i didn't see no fucking outrage two weeks ago when all these racist white motherfuckers was running up in the city hall and the fucking the city buildings and the government official buildings and shit fully armed Yelling in motherfuckers' faces. I ain't see no tear gas. I ain't see no motherfucking bullets get thrown. I ain't see nothing happen. The motherfuckers' cops stood there like good old boys and let them fucking racist fucking white people mm-hmm. yell in their face, cuss at them, threaten them just because they can't fucking go to goddamn Dunkin' Donuts in groups or whatever the fuck reason that they was protesting. Because they have to stay in the fucking house because they inconvenienced for their own fucking safety. Shit dumb as hell. That's the thing. I don't see that outrage, but anytime that we do anything, it's always an outrage and it's always that's not the right way to do it. Motherfucker, what's the right way? Because we tried to do peaceful protest and y'all ain't like that either. That's a fact. So, I just think that we need to stop um, worrying about they approval on how we should move and how we should do things and just get it fucking done. 
I concur. That's I it. Agree with you a thousand percent. Maybe if these same white people that that aren't racist that feel this way, if they would fucking speak up, then. But it don't even matter. People speaking up ain't gonna do shit. Tom Brady said something, didn't he? Not about this particular situation, but Tom Brady spoke about some shit recently. I forgot what it was. Yeah. He's the whitest of the white. But the Tom really a nigga. <laughs> he's the whitest of the white. <laughs> he is. He's as white as it gets, baby. <laughs> you think a white American, you think Tom Brady be? It's not because he carry himself like that, but he's just Yeah. Just a face. So but they don't speaking up ain't working, man. You can talk to people in the face. You can walk, so you got corners and calluses and violence and money. I mean, like I said, the looting don't bother me because number one, nobody's getting hurt. They're they not looting. In, it ain't like they raided the store and started fucking the, work, the workers up. That would have been wild, yeah. but. I'm about to jump on Minnesota offer up or Minnesota Facebook market. <laughs> and see I, what know they, so I know they're selling flat screens for the low. It was walking out with 75 inches. Look, I got five. Free shipping and all that shit. Sign me up, fam. I like, yo, I got a, I got a motherfucking 65 inch. I don't need no more. <laughs> if we have, if we have any followers or watchers in Minnesota, please let me know what you got out of that Target store. I will buy it off of you. Hey, look, you can ship it with a fake fucking name, and we'll send it to her. At, we'll get it. You ain't got to take no risk with us. It's great. The serial numbers off that bitch and everything. <laughs> You ain't gotta take no risk. Sign me up. But yeah, that's the thing, man. So it's like I need white people to stop speaking up when it's just convenient. If you really feel that way, feel that way. Stand on that shit. Call other motherfucking racists. If you're not racist, you shouldn't have no problem with calling the motherfucking racists out. Not even just the white people, cops too. The good cops. Yeah. The good cops. The good cops definitely need to speak up against the bad cops. If it's more, and I feel like before we go, um, I feel like the motherfucking the way that the police are operating is trash. Number one, they don't, they in communities that they would never fucking live in. They just there. It's a fucking job. Yeah, they just there as a job. So, of course, it's always going to be tension. Like, I remember, like, in the 90s, and I hear stories about the early 80s and the 70s and shit, how the police used to, like, actually come occupy the neighborhoods, introduce themselves to the citizens and shit. I ain't saying y'all got to come be best fucking friends with, with, with niggas in the hood or whatever the case, but I think it'll be way less tension if y'all motherfuckers actually got to know the people in the motherfucking communities that y'all are supposed to be serving and protecting. What's that? <clears throat> the fuck you got going on? Oh, facts. Oh, facts. On the ground. Cause I'm brown. Minority. And a pager. So long ago, and shit still applies, man. Yeah, man. I mean, it's never gonna stop. So, we all black people are always gonna have issues with police and races in America until the end of fucking time, or until we all band together and go somewhere where there's fucking hundreds of thousands of acres of land, and we just we buy that buy shit up. Islands, be. And we just buy that shit up. Nah, we can't even buy our own islands because I'm sure the fucking American government are going to say that we did some terrorist shit and they're going to fucking send the fighter jets to our island and bomb us or some dumb shit because everything that black people build, white people, white America destroys. Or they just take it from us and claim they did it. Yeah, we had Black Wall Street. The shit was thriving. 
black people, we, we were segregated. We was out of white people's way. Had no they dealings with them. And they fucking bombed us. They tore that shit to pieces. So they need us to patronize it. They need the black dollar because we, we have one, even though we are minority and there's not as many of us as it is of them, we have a higher buying power than they do, even though they have more money per capita than fucking black people. Our buying power is higher. But guess what? They fucking need us for that, but they don't, they don't want us for shit else. Nope. Supposed to be doing, you know, they do those random Facebook groups. So they're supposed to be doing a blackout day on July 7th. Oh, we where nobody, we should do it on fucking Juneteenth. That'd be smart, actually. That's when the blackout day should be. Well, you only buy from fucking black businesses, black owned businesses, not black run. They got to yeah, own that motherfucker too. They said it's July 7th of this year. I don't know why they did that, but so it's a good day though. Fuck it, let's do that shit. Don't spend no black dollar at no gas station, no no nothing. Fucking stores, no corner stores, no WalMarts, no nothing unless it's black owned. Well, ain't no black owned WalMarts, but yeah, no fast food stores, none of that shit for twenty four hours. You know how much mm-hmm. money, you know how much money these fucking companies are losing? They're predicting 10, sheesh, they said that again. That's about $10 million. Let's see. I don't even have $10 million Actually, and I can't I'm afford sorry, to lose. 10 bi- I apologize, $10 billion. Yeah, nigga, our buying power is crazy. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say shit. There's more than ten million black people in in the United States. So yeah, they say with the three point nine trillion dollars that we spend, it'll be roughly about ten billion dollars. That would cost them for one day. Especially like gas and shit. So. We just need to come up with some shit. Like I said, I personally don't have a solution because all my solutions are probably not some shit I should say on camera. (laughs) So I don't have a positive solution to fix this shit. Um, But I'm not out here motherfucking telling people to stop doing what they're doing either without giving them an alternative. So even from, from before Ferguson and all that shit, with the Ferguson riots, all that shit, all these people say the same shit. Oh, this ain't the way, but nobody can ever offer us what the fucking way was. I'm okay with you. Just make sure you do it in their places, uh, in their communities and shit. Yeah. Don't go to no mom and pop shops. Number one, that fucking Target, it's insured. Target is a $66.7 billion, billion dollar company. Like, Okay. All that shit is insured. Even if they, they lost fucking a couple hundred thousand dollars of that's it. That's it. They lost like an hour's worth of profit. Like life goes on. That'd be alright. And it's insured. So all they're gonna do is go through inventory, see what's not there no more. After they do their little fucking scans. So Whatever's not be. there, they're gonna fucking get the shit insured and they're gonna get the money right back anyway, and they're gonna get the shit re-merchandised. So and call it a day. It don't, I'm not affected by no fucking looting. They're not fucking with no mom and pop stores. They're not fucking with no local black owned businesses. They're not fucking with no local owned businesses, period. It's a fucking no, target. Not. It's a fucking target. So, end on a positive note. Let us definitely end on a positive note. So, I'll let you shoot first. God damn it. I was hoping by me saying that that you would go first. Um, <laughs> try to get out of this shit. Outside opening back up, man. Outside is opening. Get out there, is, live your life. Is that positive? I went to Atlanta this past weekend. I'm fine. I was <laughs> just fucking. <laughs> I'm cool. 
So, <laughs> live your life, man. Don't let anybody stop you from living your life. Nah, that's it. Apply that, apply that to all aspects of your life. Just don't let anybody stop you from living your life, though. Yeah. My positive nurture is just do your research. Stop. Niggas stop. are never going to do that. Why would yeah, they do that? Just do your research, especially if you pushing the narrative about anything. Like if you just talking up so strongly about something, like you should probably research it. Don't just talk yeah, sure. shit you just saw one YouTube video. Now you're an expert in this situation. Stop believing everything you see on YouTube. <laughs> stop believing YouTube. Unless it's be wild be the podcast, then you should probably believe it because we don't tell no lies. I lie to y'all sometimes. No, I don't. I don't. Time for that shit. And white people, stop. So being white, <laughs> no, they can't do that. Nigga. They <laughs> stop go. being white. Nah, stop so strongly jumping in black issues unless you're ready to help black people solve them. That's it. <laughs> so yeah, until next show. Oh yeah, we definitely got to Yeah, we wildin'. Salute, brother. Salute, 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 salute. Cut yeah. this shit.